Okay, regressions on the calculator. So this will be handy to know. This might show up. And problem 11 on the test. Facebook held its initial public offering on May 18th of 2012. This means the company went public and people could buy shares of the company. The value of one share on October 9th of each of the following years is given by the chart below. So you could buy it for 20 bucks and 39 cents a share if you would have done that. So 2012, that's only that's five years ago, six years ago. If you had invested and bought up a ton of shares, today it's worth 172. You could have made some sweet money. So we're going to look at the data. We're going to come up with a linear model, come up with an exponential model to see if we can use it to predict future prices. So, on your calculator, open it up, hit the home button, let's do number one, a new document, and we are going to add a list. Okay, now on your list, it's important that you title them. So column A, uh, you can title it whatever you want year and then column B value or money or whatever you want okay now it says this is a big deal let the year 2012 equal zero so we're gonna call this year zero year one year two year three year four and year five so five is quite a bit smaller than the number 2017. If we use these numbers, it's going to make our models huge. So I'm going to use smaller numbers and it's going to keep everything a little bit simpler and, and easier to manage, easier to work with. So in your calculator, I'm just going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then let's fill in the corresponding data. Okay, then maybe just double check it. Make sure each entry matches up. Okay, so once you got the data put into your table, hit home again. And this time you're going to add the pink. Our charts and tables. Now you got all these random points, so click on your x-axis. Your x-axis is always the independent variable. It's always going to be usually time. So that's the year. Click on this to add a y-axis. That's the cost. And there we go. So now we've got year versus money. Time versus money. Okay, now once you're in here, everything's going to be under the menu. So if you hit menu, let's go analyze. So number four. And we're going to do option six going to regression let's show a linear regression okay there you go so that's where you're gonna copy down that's the answer to number one so a so your linear regression is y equals 29.0243 round the decimal to four places times x plus 16.9376 and the y is actually referring to money and x is referring to year so whatever the year is you're going to times it by 29.0243 and then you're going to add 16 bucks 17 bucks and that model can be used to predict future years. Now let's come up with the exponential regression. So go back into your menu. For regression, we're going to hide the linear. 
go back into the menu, 4, 6, and let's show the exponential. Okay, so you gotta copy that down. Your exponential, the money of that stock is going to equal 27.1966 times that by 1.4864 raised to whatever year you're interested in. So if I'm interested in the year 2025, you are not going to plug 2025 in. You're going to plug 2025. Oh, that's what we want. We want 2025. 2025 minus 2012. Because 2012 is the beginning, and that should be 13. So you can continue the years 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So 18 will match up with 6, and so forth, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 2025, we are going to plug in, instead of 2025, we're going to plug in a 13. So C, let's use the linear model to project the value in 2025. So the money is going to equal 29 0.0243 times the year, which you're going to plug 13, plus 16.9376, type that in, hit enter on the calculator, and the cost, if the trend continues as it has, the cost is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of... 300 400 bucks so if you hop in now and the pattern continues 13 years down the road from 2012 it's gonna be almost 400 bucks a share instead of 20 bucks a share so that's a ton of money D use the exponential model so your exponential model the money is going to equal 27.1966 times that by 1.4864 raised to 13. And this one is going to exponentials grow way fast. This one's going to spit out 4,701.96. It's almost 5 grand. So you would hope it would be that much especially if you buy some right now, but it's probably not. It is probably going to follow a linear. Because exponential is really, I mean, it looks good right now, but we're only looking at the past five years. And you will see that it, over time it's going to fit more of a linear model. Exponential is going to grow way too fast. These numbers are going to get way too big. If it was true, then everyone would be dumping money into Facebook hoping that it would blow up to 4,000 bucks but it probably won't linear why because exponential grows too fast okay so your unit conversions number 12 my bus travels at an average speed of 60 kilometers an hour. And if I live 13 miles away from the school, how many minutes? So here we go. We got minutes, we got kilometers, we got hours, we got miles. So we got all sorts of stuff. They want your answer to be in minutes. So I'm going to take this initial rate. I'm going to write that down. 60 kilometers per is divide per one hour. Okay, that's what we're going to start with. Now we are going to, he lives 13 miles from the school, so I'm going to convert to miles. So I'm going to times this by one, and I want to undo kilometers, so I'm going to put kilometers on bottom, and miles on top, and I'm going to use this 
conversion right here. So one mile is equal to 1.609 kilometers. And now kilometers will divide out kilometers. And then just times the tops. So on the top, 60 times 1, you're going to have 60 miles. And on bottom, 1 hour times 1.609 is just going to be 1.609 hour. Okay, now, let's simplify this fraction. So let's go 60 divided by 1.609. And that is 37 point two nine blah 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 oh two four miles per one hour all right so that's the rate the bus is going it's going 37 miles an hour so he lives 13 miles away which is less than 37 so his commute is probably going to be less than one hour Okay, now he wants it in exact minutes. So let's take what we've got here. The 37.29024 miles per one hour. And let's change that to minutes. So because I've got hour on bottom, I'm going to go hour on top and minutes on bottom. And I'm going to use this ratio. One hour is equal to 60 minutes. So hour will now divide out hour times your tops. 37 times 1 is just going to be 37.29 miles. Now don't round until the very, very end. So I've got this number stored in my calculator. And on bottom I've got 60 minutes. Okay, now I'm going to divide this. I'm going to go 37.29 divided by 60. So on my calculator I'm going to go up and grab that number that whole number, divide that by 60, and I get this. I've got 0 0.62150 blah 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 miles per one minute. So he's going a little more than half a mile a minute. So that is now the rate I'm going to use. So if he's going over a half a mile a minute and I live 13 miles from the school I'm going to set up a proportion. So I'm going to compare miles to minutes so 0.6215 blah 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 miles per one minute and I want to know 13 miles so I'm going to put that on top and I need to know how many minutes it's going to take, so that's going to be my x. So now you can just cross multiply. So you times those two, times those two. And what you're going to do is 0.6215x equals 13. You're going to divide that by 0.6215. So you're going to take 13 and divide it by 0.62. And you are going to get x is now you can round at the very, very end. x is 20.917. And that is how many minutes it's going to take for that morning commute. Okay, number 13. You've got a hot tub that's 8 feet wide by 6 feet long. How much water in gallons would it require? to raise the water level 8 inches. So it doesn't say how deep the hot tub is and that really is irrelevant. So it doesn't matter. So if you've got a hot tub, if you say it's um, empty and you want to raise it 8 inches or if it's 3 fourths of the way full and you want to raise it 8 inches, I'm only concerned about just the 8 inches. So if it was here and you want to raise it another 8 inches, I only need this. So my specs are going to be 8 feet 
by 6 feet. So volume is just length times width times depth. So I'm going to go 8 feet times 6 feet times, okay, now I'm 8 inches. So 8 inches, 8 twelfths of a foot. So 8 twelfths of a foot is really the same thing as 2 thirds of a foot. So now if I take my, and I need everything to be in feet, so you have to change that 8 inches to feet. So it's just going to be 8 twelfths of a foot. So now go 8 times 12. times two-thirds and you should get 32 feet cubed okay so that's my volume my volume that I need to raise that is 32 feet cubed so the question is how many gallons do I need to put in there so I'm going to take that 32 feet feet cubed over one and I'm going to times it by this guy right here so feet cubed are on the top so I'm going to put feet cubed on the bottom and that's one foot cube is equal to 7.48 gallons so that's going to divide that so I'm just going to take my 32 and times it by 7.48 and this one is going to be 239.76 gallons. Okay, problem number 14 is going to be a linear model. And then 15, we're not going to do any spreadsheets, so you don't got to worry about that. So your linear model, I was charged 12 bucks for 20 gallons of natural gas and 16 bucks for 36 gallons of natural gas. My bill is formulated by a linear model. Okay, so we know it's gonna be a linear model. Now the hard part is this. So they give you two specific points of data. Do we wanna go with 12 and 20? 16 and 36 or do we want to reverse them and go 20 12 36 and 16 so which one of these is going to be the X which one is independent is the money independent or is the number of gallons used independent and if you think about it, so your monthly bill is based on how many gallons you use. So in the colder months, you're going to use more gallons. So that is what is independent. Month by month, you're going to use a different number of gallons. Um, so the gallons is going to be independent. So your bill totally depends on how many gallons you use. So we're going to go with this one right here. We're going to put the gallons and the x's and the money and the y's. And if we do that, you always want to figure out which one is your independent, which variable can stand alone, and it is the number of gallons. That's what changes month to month. So here we go. Your change this way from a 12 to a 16, that increased four times. And a 22, a 36, that increased 16 times. So your linear models, y equals mx plus b. And we're just finding the m right now to change the slope. So the slope is rise over run. And that is 4 over 16, which is a fourth, which is 0.25. And that means they are charging you 25 cents per gallon so this is gallon this is money so one dollar per four gallons is 0.25 per one gallon so how they calculate your bill 
is they're going to charge you 25 cents per gallon plus whatever B was and B is like your beginning so B is the very zero so if you use zero gallons a month how much are you going to have to pay and you could kind of work backwards or you could pick one of the points so I could plug 20 I know now that they charged me 20 bucks for tw well let's see 20 gallons they charged me my bill is 12 bucks so I know I paid 12 bucks and I used 20 gallons and each gallon cost me a quarter so I can figure this out now so if I do a quarter times 20 gallons you are going to get 12 bucks so that is going to be 5 bucks plus something so if you minus five bucks, minus five bucks, that means you're going to start off, if you don't use any gallons, if you use zero gallons, they're going to charge you seven bucks a month. Okay, so your model is this. Y equals 0.25x plus seven. So project my cost for 87 gallons. So I'm going to take the 87 and times each of them by a quarter. So 87 times 0.25, add that to 7, and my bill is going to be 28.75. C, we actually have done, what is the cost for 0 gallons? It's going to be 7 bucks. Okay, now the last one, this one's probably the toughest one. So this is going to be an exponential model, and it's kind of a continuous growth. So population models are always continuous. There's always someone dying, someone being born every second of every day, especially in large cities. So your exponential model is going to be the initial amount times E, which is kind of our continuous rate, and you're going to raise that to the K which is the rate times the number of years alright so population of a town has a tripling time of 20 years so we know that every 20 years population is going to triple and they tell us in 2011 the population was 32 grand. You need, before you do anything, I need K. And K is the rate, the yearly rate, every year. If you know that it's going to triple in 20 years, how much would it increase by one year? And that's what K is. So K is the rate, the yearly rate. Uh, so here we go. You are going to use, for your Y and your A, it doesn't matter. So if I use, your A is your initial amount. If I use this 32 grand, 32 grand, and I know 20 years later that's going to triple. So if you do 32 grand and you triple it, that's going to end at 96 grand so this is my ending why is what you end up with so I'm gonna start with 32 grand I'm gonna triple it that's what I'm gonna end up with I'm gonna times that by E to the K I have no idea what K is but I do know that it takes 20 years for that to happen so now I know everything but K so I'm gonna undo this and solve for K so let's undo the times Let's divide by 32 grand, divide that by 32 grand, and you have 3 equals e to the 20k. 
Now you have to undo the base E. The only way you can do that is with the log. So I'm going to morph this exponential equation to a logarithmic equation. So log, there's kind of three components. The 3 is going to go in one of the boxes, the E is going to go in one of the boxes, and the exponent is going to go in one of the boxes. Okay, the E, that is your base, that goes here. So the base size matches up there, so it's log base E. The 3 goes here. And then your exponent is always what a logarithmic equation equals. It equals the exponent. So you got log and base E of 3 equals 20K. Now you punch this in on your calculator and change it to a decimal. So type in log in base E of 3 and log in base E. That is the natural log. That is ln. So you use either one of those. So if you change this to a decimal, it is like 1.0986 blah 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 equals 20k divided by 20 divided by 20 and you found k. So if I divide that by 20, you have k at 0 0.0549. So k Nine three oh six blah blah blah. It's a big decimal, so it is like five percent a year, five point four, almost five and a half percent. So that population is increasing by five and a half percent every single year, and that will add up to tripling in a twenty-year time span. Okay, now you found K. You need to know the yearly growth rate, I and mean, that's what we just found. Five and a half percent. Okay, now we can do A. So, by what factor will the population grow in 90 years? So, the end is equal to the start, 32 grand, times E to the K, so point oh, and don't round this decimal, type the whole thing in, don't ever round till the very, very end blah 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 times 90 so this question by what factor it doesn't want to know what the population is going to be in 90 years it wants to know what are you gonna times 32 grand by and your answer is gonna be this so if you do e to the 90k you are going to get e to the 90k you're going to get 140.29 da, da, da. so now at the end you can round so I'm gonna take 32 grand and I'm gonna times it by 140.29 da, 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 and that will give me my total population but it only wants to, it doesn't want the total population, it just wants to know what are you gonna times the 32 gram by? So there we are. Okay, B. What population would you expect for this town in the year 2047? So first of all, 2047, take away 2011 is 36. So I'm gonna use 36 for my time. So now it wants the total population so I'm gonna take the 32 grand I'm gonna times it by E to the 36 times K which was 0.0549 blah 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 just so that's just type it on your calculator hit enter and you get 231,000 189 people okay see when can you anticipate that the town is gonna hit the 75,000 mark so that is the end result this is what you're gonna plug in to Y so 75 grand is going to equal 32 grand 
times e to the 0 0.0549 times t. What we don't know is t. So we're going to solve for t. So first let's undo this times 32 grand. So divide that by 32 grand, divide that by 32 grand, and you're going to get a decimal 2.34. Four three seven five equals e to the point oh five four nine t. So now the only way to undo the base of e is to change it to a log. So it is going to be log in base e of two point three four three seven five, and that will equal your exponent. That's going to equal point oh five. 49t. So change this to a decimal on your calculator. Solve for t. So divide by 0 0.0549. Divide this, whatever this number is, divide it by 0 0.0549. And the time is going to equal like 15 and a half years. Somewhere, that's pretty bad, 15 and a half years. And that is it.